Well, welcome to the second of these uh, thoughts for the day about uh, Christmas carols. Um, I thought I'd take the opportunity of the snow being here to record the second one. Apologies if by the time you watch it the, s the snow is gone, but we're looking at in the bleak midwinter. I guess it's one of my favourite carols and a whole host of reasons. There's something about the tune, there's that wonderful the tune we sing in church, the, uh, the written by composer Gustav Holst. In the bleak midwinter, frosty winds made moan. It's just got a wonderful feel to it. Then of course there's the other one that uh, you often get, get on television, the, the Harold Dark, oh, apologies for the snow just falling, the Harold Dark tune. In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan. Earth stood hard as iron, water like a stone. It's just a, two beautiful tunes, and the words too are incredibly gripping, aren't they? And I guess we love it particularly for that that last verse what can i give him poor as i am just start to to reach deep into ourselves i'll come back to that in a minute but as i look through it again i just tell us fascinating way the way that it works the first verse is just entirely romantic in the bleak midwinter frosty wind made moan earth stood hard as iron water like a stone snow had fallen snow on snow snow on snow in the bleak midwinter, long ago. And it's, in terms of the historic story of Jesus, it's entirely romantic. They don't get that much snow in Bethlehem, maybe one, one day of snow, a couple of days of snow a year. It doesn't fall snow on snow, they don't get day after day of snow. The, the earth is never hard as iron, the average low temperature even in the winter is only down to, to eight degrees. It just, it just isn't like that. But yet, Maybe there is something in that depiction. It wasn't snowy. It wasn't, there wasn't frozen soil when Jesus came. But he did come into a, a, a cold, dark world. A world which longed for something to break in. And maybe that depiction, although, it, yeah, as I say, the cold isn't right. There is something biblical, biblical about shining light into a darkness. Maybe that is echoed in the idea of that snowy dark. Because into the darkness, into the cold, something is needed to break in. And the second verse tells us what? It says that our God, heaven cannot hold him, nor earth sustain him. Heaven and earth shall flee away when he comes to reign. It says that our, our God is, is so great that heaven can't hold him. It echoes words that uh, from, from 1 Kings 8, when, uh, the dedication of the temple, which says that God is so great that heaven can't hold him. And so he comes, the dedication of the temple, to come and dwell on earth. And in Jesus he comes so much more dramatically, so much more intimately. Uh, verse 2 carries on that, uh, heaven and earth will flee away when he comes to reign. That, and he's thinking about when, when Jesus comes a second time. God is so big that when he comes, everything will change. Heavens will be rolled up like a, like a scroll, the book of Revelation tells us. That's how great God is. And yet by the end of the verse, we've got this amazing contrast. That the God is that who's that great. A stable place. Well, maybe not a stable, but at least a place where animals feed is sufficient for him, enough for him. Enough for him whom angels flee down before, uh, fall down before. Enough for him, verse three, being worshipped by, worshipped just accompanied by animals is enough. Because the God who is so great humbles himself to come to earth. It's a similar idea to what we were thinking about yesterday in See Amid the Winter Snow. Verse 4 has another contrast about, about the angels, the choir of angels. They, angels and archangels may have gathered there. Cherubim and, and seraphim thronged the air. But 
it, then there's the intimacy, but his mother only, in her maiden bliss, worshipped the beloved with a kiss. It leads into that final question of the last verse. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I'd bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I'd do my part. But what I can, I give him, give my heart. And I was thinking about that. It's not so much that all I can give him is my heart, but actually what I need to give him is my heart. If I give him a lamb, if I'm a shepherd, I give him a lamb, I've done it. But if I give him my heart, I give him, ev him everything. And, and in fact, it is only as we give Jesus our hearts, as we fall in love with him in response to the love that he shows us, it's only as we give him our hearts that we can really receive what he wants to do for us. Because what he wants to do for us is deep on the inside. And it's only as we give him our hearts that he can capture our desires and take our, our messed up desires and longings and refocus them onto something new and life-changing. May he do that for you today as you give him your heart. God bless.